Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1978, 79, 80, 81 Carryover League. Uh, we're beginning the process of what do we? Where do we go now with the 77, 80 League? The Orioles uh, beat the Reds in the World Series, and we talked about the end of year rosters. We looked at uh, all of uh, the leagues. And I have kind of enlarged what the rosters look like at the end of the season. And so we start getting ready for the next season by doing the trade carousel. Uh, what we have to do is you have 32 teams and they all have various numbers of players they want to keep, put on wave, and retire. Going back to the top of the sheet here, uh, this column, of course, is keeper indicated by 10,000 tokens or units dollars the yellow color here a player put on waivers leaving that team can play for any other team he still has some life left in his legs these are hundred dollar players and then lastly retired players which are comprised of players who are retired don't play baseball anymore but also guys who are very uh, poor con uh, condition uh, as far as their production and therefore probably should be pushed into retirement. So the number at the top for each team in this area here shows how many keepers you got, how many waivers you got, how many retires you have. In this case for the Baltimore 8, it is three keepers, two waivers, three retires. You look up here and that's how this number is calculated. It adds up all of these eight uh, numbers and comes up with this number. And so you draw a line after the first digit and then the next two digits and then the last two digits. And then when you add it up all for 32 teams, you come up with, uh, you want to come up with this, this number, 1286464. Six, That's four, two, and two times 32 teams. Currently for the baseball season, it's currently sitting at this number, 130, 7749. You break it down, 130, 7749. We want to get to here, 128, 64, 64. So, overages and shortages. The league wants to protect two more players than it can, or I should say keep. So some keepers are going to have to realize that they're not that good. Two guys who are on the keeper indicator are probably not that good and suited to go into waivers. Those two guys will be added to 13 more guys who are on waivers. And a lot of these guys were, if you watched me doing elimination videos, I kindly put them on waivers because they still created a Stratomatic card from for them. So I didn't want to retire them if Stratomatic made their card. But in essence, those 13 cards plus a couple more, those 15 cards will end up in retirement. And then when that balance is done, you'll have 128, 64, and 64. So, with that, how do you start the trade carousel? Well, here is the end of the season, the draft order. And it goes in order from worst to first. So the Expos, uh, had a 250 winning percentage of the first pick in the draft. Baltimore is 32nd. They won the World Series beating Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Reds. Losers in the Championship Series, California and Houston. Losers in the Divisional Round, Ohio, Philadelphia, Colorado, Seattle. You get the idea. Losers in the Wild Card, Milwaukee, Florida, Boston, and Pittsburgh. Then you have 12 other teams that didn't make the playoffs. And then the top eight teams or the bottom eight teams are the fourth place teams in each division and the other caveat to this is that I make sure that you don't have more than uh, a maximum of two consecutive teams from the same league so by doing that by winning percentage you have an American League an American League then you go National League American League National National American National American, National American, National National American, National American, National American, we can continue this. 
National American, National American, National, American League, American League, National League, National League, American, National, National, American, National, American. So there you are. See how that works? That's how I put my draft order together for 32 teams. And only occasionally, here's, if you, this is winning percentage, you might be able to find if some team got a, an advantage here of significance. And when you look at the number here, really there isn't. I mean, you see some, it's not consecutive, but you don't see any jumping out liars in this list until you get down to, to here. And that's because uh, Milwaukee got knocked out in the wild card game and Seattle and the other teams won their wild card games. So that's why Milwaukee gets a 24. That's good for them. Some other weird anomalies. The Dodgers did finish in fourth place in the West, so they have the eighth overall pick in the draft, something they never draft that high. So, with that being said, tonight we're going to look at the first eight teams, and then we'll call it, as to how they can get to the proper number of keepers, waves, and retires. And so, in this column, I've indicated the present state, and this will be the post state. So, the Expos were the first team on the clock to address that they have only two keepers, two guys on waivers, and four on retirement. So what did they do? Let's take a look at the transactions they made. First transaction is with Colorado. They trade, essentially, Dick Ruthven for Hal Dues and Elias Sosa. Um, Ruthven will continue while well, Hal Dews will be done, and so will so have a short career and a retired player. And they then then the Expos traded P. Falcone and a retired player to the Mets for Dave Hamilton and Buddy Schultz. What these trades did was get the math for the Expos to the perfect four keepers, two waivers, and two retires. That's how this works. It's a game of... Um, Movable chairs, movable, and uh, everybody wants to finish at 40202. Um, the second team was Oakland, who started at 40400. They only made one move. Oakland did at 40400. Uh, they traded Jim Slayton back to the Brewers for a retired player to get a draft token. As Jim Slate would be a good pitcher for Oakland, Oakland's getting nothing to return a retired player, but Oakland gets a draft token. A draft token is a move. One more move in the draft than your opponent. Could be in the free agent round, or it could just be equating future trades. It's a chip. Um, counts as one move. So when we look at uh, Oakland, they pick up a token. Their math is at 40301. They need to still make one more move, but they pause for the moment to the Cubs. And the Cubs sit and don't do anything. They're at 40202 and they like what they have. They're standing, they like the cards they got dealt. They're going to hold on to them. I'm not going to pass the trash. They'll hold on to those guys. White Sox had some nice moves. They started at 50102 and get down to the required number and also picking up two draft tokens. But check these trades out for the Chai Sox. This is smart smart moves and also one other uh, bit of news about the white Sox: they were the winner of the commissioner award for roster utilization they maximize roster util utilization the commissioner award is the 33rd pick in the draft between the first and second round they get an extra draft choice in the draft this is going to be good news for the white Sox, who are kind of lost during this timeline because uh, they're in the same division with the Kansas City Royals, who dominated during this timeline, and they put the Brewers in here. We know the Brewers and Harvey Wallbangers, are, those are the top two dogs in that division. So the White Sox are making some moves to slide in. Pretty interesting moves. Here we go. So they trade Brian Downing and Fred Patek to the Angels, who aren't in their same division now. They're in a different division. For Thad Bosley, Jim Essien, and they get a draft token. Now, Brian Downing is the big 79, 
where he hits 326. However, Jim Essien has an 81 where he hits 308. And it's, so you figure you've got Essien for four years, Downing only have a two year deal. And the White Sox, you remember, played in that league championship series with Don Kessinger at shortstop. They'll now have Freddie Potek at short. And the White Sox get Thad Bosley, who did actually played for the White Sox. Then in more of a blockbuster trade, this is one of those uh, why I call it a carousel. A team passes pass, you know, moves a player to a player to a team to a team. So this is a four-team trade. Richie Zisk, this is about a bunch of corner outfielders. Zisk goes from the White Sox to the Rangers. The Rangers send Jeff Burroughs to the Braves. The Braves send Barry Bonnell to Toronto. And Toronto sends uh, a wavered player, Merv Rettman, to the White Sox. Um, the White Sox really have no intention of, of keeping Rettman. So they get a draft token. And the team that loses the draft token is Atlanta. And the reason they do is because they get Jeff Burroughs, a monster MVP-like year for the Braves, and they lose Barry Bunnell. So they're the, the biggest beneficiary in this. You see, Texas breaks even. They get Richie Zick, they lose Burroughs. So Braves have to cough up a token to the Chai Sox in this move. Fun, and these transactions kind of happen that way, pretty close to it. All right, uh, Portland stands pat. They took a look at their cards. They put their hand. They put the cards on the table, patted the deck, and said, uh, "We're going to st stick." The Mets started with a 6-0-2-0-0. Needed to get rid of two keepers, and they got down to four keepers. They still need to move a guy in retirement, but that's not a big deal. They pick up a draft token. You saw the trade earlier, up here, where they moved Buddy Schultz. Basically, they got themselves Pete Falcone, who actually is good for the Mets in 1981. So that's a good move. The rest of these guys are going to be out of baseball soon. But Falcone will have a nice year in 81 for the Mets. But here's what they did. They sent Jerry Kuzman to the Minnesota Twins for Fred Norman. Fred Norman will go on waivers. The Mets get a token. And this is pretty much the end of the Jerry Kuzman tenure for the Mets and the beginning of a short tenure with the Twins. Let's take a look at that, actually. I brought this up. Jerry Kuzman, long time, met, but from 1967 through 1978. So the Mets have punted on Kuzman's three and 15 year of 1978 at age 35, getting a nice t uh, haul to send him to the Twins. The Twins in 79 get 20 wins out of Kuzman. Going to the American League. It's a very deceiving 20 wins. His ERA is 338 and his whip's a buck 33. So he, it's, you know, he's, it's good, but it's not classic Kuzman, of course. And then in 1980, you, you start to see Jerry on a little migration here. He's starting to lose again with Minnesota, the White Sox, and then the Phillies. Has a couple nice years in there. At age 41 with the Phillies is one of his better years as far as after 77. So there it is. Uh, the Mets finally parted. They parted with Tom Seaver last year and they parted with Jerry Kuzman this year. They got to get better. They simply have to get better. They were in last place and they got to start rebuilding. So with that, the Mets still have one more move to make to get a retired guy. Toronto started at 30500 and basically uh, they got a, another keeper. The keeper they got was Barry Bunnell, corner outfielder, who played for the uh, Toronto in 80. He has, a, he has a nice 83 for the Blue Jays. He is actually part of that young Toronto team that starts to win in the early 80s with Lloyd Mosby and Jesse Barfield and George Bell and Rance Mullinex, Dave Steve, and all those guys. So, Bonnell goes to Toronto, and Toronto is one step closer to being uh, set at 40202. And lastly, tonight, we'll just start, stop with the Dodgers. They started at 40202, and they finish at 40202. They don't make any moves. And when we look at their roster for the uh, Dodgers, 
it's interesting that they're they're kind of in a, a pickle here. They have to keep Dusty Baker and Davy Lopes and Reggie Smith and Tommy John. Now, oddly enough, John eventually goes to the Yankees. One of the guys they put on waivers is Bill Russell. And the reason this happened this way is because Tommy John is more effective than Bill Russell. Sorry, sorry, Bill. I mean, that's just the plain reality of it. So we could, let's look at Tommy John here and think, should the, should the Dodgers begin this process of moving on from Tommy John? Right now, they want to keep him. And that's for one more year. So the Dodgers have him in the year of 78. Then he moves to the Yankees. So if the Dodgers want to, and I can rethink this, and we'll get into this as far as, there's, there's a lot of time to start thinking of these moves. The Dodgers could very well move Tommy John. I mean, if the Yankees get on the phone and say we want Tommy John or whatever, a blockbuster trade could happen. John could be gone. They'd only have three keepers, and then therefore Bill Russell would be a keeper. He'd be the fourth guy. One, two, three, four. Well, we'll pause there tonight. This is a fun winter project to do to get us to spring training and all that. That's been the first eight uh, picks for the 1980, 78, 79, 80, 81 carryover league involving the last place teams. Thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you next time.